This is an eBay package. Came from Texas. Manville, Texas. Measured about 12 inches square. And it weighs 6 pounds. And what I've got here is a WaveTech model 182 function generator. Not many controls. This whole thing is frequency modification. Direct drive. So for example, the highest frequency is 2 times 1 meg which makes it a 2 megahertz function generator. has a DC offset control that's switched. And an amplitude control is just variable. A voltage input that controls the oscillator frequency so we can FM modulate it. A trigger in a sink out, sine, triangle, and square, and then mode. Run it continuously or trigger it, either through a trigger or a gate control, or just a one-shot manual. Power on off. Now I have a lot of 2 megahertz function generators. They seem to have been really popular in the 70s and 80s. I'm not sure why 2 megahertz, but there must be a dozen of them out there. What caught my eye is the fact that this has a 30 dB output into 50 ohms, and that's 1 watt. It has a they're both 50 ohms. It has two outputs. One's a 2 volt peak to peak, and one's a 20 volt peak to peak. Now, this is no load. If I put a 50 ohm termination on there, I should get 10 volts peak to peak. It's fairly big, it's heavy. It's got a bale on it. This particular one appears to be in rather good shape. Now, the cord is permanently connected. This has no IEC connector on it, just... But it is a, a three-prong cord. There's not a mark on this thing. Now, before I buy any piece of equipment like this on eBay, or almost anywhere for that matter, I make sure that I can get a manual. I'd be surprised how sketchy manuals can be. I did find a not very well copied schematic and operator manual of the 182. This was at auction. I was the only bid. Uh, this was a starting and finishing bid. Which looks good, except the shipping price was $28.34. So all in all, this thing cost me up with tax about 50 bucks. This is the only description. It 
and this was the seller J-O-N-D B 2004 I guess since it's a used piece of equipment before we look inside of it we better make sure it works or doesn't work okay that's what I expected it lights this cursor is illuminated on off I have it set for a multiplier of 1 million the dial is set at approximately 2 high output they're labeled low and high I have a 50 ohm pass through termination on my oscilloscope. If we look at the oscilloscope, we can see we're putting out 2 megahertz and 9.6 volts peak to peak, which is just a tad low. It should be 10 volts peak to peak. Take it apart and see what it looks like. The only thing I can see are four screws. The feet are held on by screws coming through from the inside of the case. The screw insists on being screwed out its entire length. I hope there's not something in there that's going to be rattling around. Looks like the top comes off. This is pretty nice inside, just at first glance. This was never used where they smoked, I'll say that. <laughs> wow. So these filter capacitors are Sprague. And the date code is... 2102. I'm assuming 2102 means the 21st week of 2002, which would make this thing 11, but 21 years old. It's really nice inside. Not a lot of electrolytic capacitors other than the power supply. It looks like they're all Sprague orange drops and some ceramic discs. As I said, I found a manual online. no page numbers. Okay. So the date of this document's uh, 79. 6 of 79. Sections on installation operation. Functional block diagram. And back in those days, 20 years ago, we have a complete circuit description and alignment. This is what I buy the manuals for. Well, this was a free manual, but the only special piece of test equipment would be a distortion analyzer. I'm assuming that's to make the sine wave. 
Other than that, it takes a 60 megahertz oscilloscope and a frequency counter. Then it, it talks about all of these adjustments, so that are all resistors. All these. I don't think there's adjustable capacitor in here. A troubleshooting section. Now I noticed this earlier. I'll zoom in on this a little bit. It appears that once this is plugged into an outlet, this transformer is energized immediately. The only thing in the primary circuit is a fuse. So the transformer is always energized. I believe the transformer is reconnectable for 120 or 240. Transformer is actually mounted. It's hung from this metal bracket. Which is very interesting. If we look at this circuit, you'll see that the transformer secondary is switched by the power supply switch. So the transformer is always energized. Then we go through some circuitry and I would have thought with a high and low output you would have had high and low stage amplification or maybe two stage amplification where the low was taken somewhere else. Here we've got a power amplifier, a couple of complementary transistors, and the output's taken here and it's padded down or not to supply the uh, high and low outputs. And there is a, a note somewhere I've read that the low output, which is nominally 50 ohms, by swapping one of or both of these resistors, I guess it's both of them. So if you wanted to use this on any audio system at 600 ohms, you would reconfigure these two resistors. They might be these two resistors down here. Well, this is pretty impressive. I'm really happy. It's immaculate. So I may go through and do an alignment. If I encounter anything, I'll add it to this video. Now that I've actually bought an 82, a 182, I found out that the 182A is virtually identical to this, except it goes to 4 megahertz. Now this manual and the, a couple of 182A manuals will be in the subdirectory below. I think if I had it, if I knew what I was doing, <laughs> I would have looked for a 182A just to get the increase in frequency. I've gone through the calibration of this unit. Uh, everything seems to respond really well. Everything is a resistance. There's no capacitive adjustments at all. Now, this is a little bigger than I'm used to. I've got a number of 2 megahertz function generators that are about this big. 
instead of this big. Uh, right now I'm using a JDR DFG 600, which is a sweep function generator. It's probably this big and not quite as high. And it is a sweep function generator and it has a vernier dial. This one does not, that's a direct acting dial. Looking at the oscilloscope, this yellow trace is the uh, wave tech under review, and this purple trace is my JDR DFG 600 function generator. This is the wave tech unit. This is the unit I have on my bench right now. And that's a square wave at 2 kilohertz. They're a little bit different in amplitude, but that's just the scope setting. I'm going to go to a square wave at 100 kilohertz. And you can see that they're both virtually identical. I'll go to 2 megahertz. And you see my bench unit is not quite as good. Granted, neither one are wonderful square waves, but the uh, wave tech under review makes a much better square wave at 2 megahertz than my bench unit. There's 20 hertz square wave. They don't look good, but they look identical. Look at a sine wave. Actually, the uh, wave tech looks a little better. We look at a 2 kilohertz sine wave. It's a 2 kilohertz sine wave. They look virtually identical. And a 2 megahertz sine wave. So after looking at the oscilloscope, this wave tech actually looks pretty good. And compared to my bench unit, it certainly looks much better. And I've been completely satisfied with my bench unit. I may have to squeeze this in.